Hello, I am Dr. Levon Hairapetian, a business professor at Houston Baptist University. In this video, I will show you how to do hierarchical clustering using analytic solver software. That's the software which you supposed to purchase by now and hopefully you already have it on your computer. I, I have it on my computer also. So that's what we'll do. Let's just go to, let me switch to Excel file. This is the example of six observations which we discussed in my, uh, one of my previous videos uh, when we did hierarchical clustering manually and we uh, created a dendrogram which represents just clustering process, visualizes the clustering process. So this was the dendrogram which we created manually. What I'm going to do is to do hierarchical clustering now using analytic solver. And then we'll compare this uh, dendrograms created manually and created by the software and hopefully we'll see that they are the same. Okay, let's do it. We have to go to, if you already installed it, then you will click on data mining. Let's close this window, data mining, and then go and select cluster tab. Click here, and we want to do hierarchical clustering. Before I do this, by the way, pay attention, I clicked somewhere, anywhere inside of my data set. This is important because when you click somewhere inside of your data set, then software will automatically figure out what is the range of your data. If you click somewhere else and start it, then you have to adjust and tell explicitly what is what your data set, where is your data set. So let's click inside of the data set, go to data mining, cluster, and we are doing hierarchical clustering. So we'll get this window, and as you can see, it's step one of three. So there will be three steps of hierarchical clustering, this software. The first thing which you have to do is you have to check and make sure that your data range is correct. So data range which software figured out is from A3 to, till C9, A3 till C9, which is correct. That's good. Now in this window, you will see the li list of all variables which are used in, in, in observations, we have only two, X and Y, that's why you see only these two. Now, when you do a hierarchical clustering, you have to specify the clustering will be done based on which variables. You can select all of them, or you can select part of them. In this case, we have two variables, we'll select both of them. So select, or click, and then click on this arrow, which means we selected the variable, now we'll select Y variable. So what we decided so far that we will do cluster analysis based using these two variables. Then we will click next. Step two of three, cluster analysis. Here we have to specify multiple, several things. First of all, if we check this box, then we will, that means we want normalization. In this case, we do not need any normalization because normalization is used when the scale of your variables are dramatically different. In this case, the scale is the same. The values are, all of them are within zero and one. So there is no need for normalization. Then we have to specify which, uh, which measure of similarity between observation will, observations will be used. Euclidean, we will use Euclidean distance. That's what we used in our uh, manual example also in, in one of my previous video. Then here we have to select which uh, similar method or clustering method will be used. And in previous example, we use single linkage, so we'll use the same single linkage. Click next. Then we'll, we check this because we want to draw the dendrogram and we check show uh, cluster membership, which means we'll tell that the which cluster is nested in which cluster. Default here you see six because we have only six observations. 
In general, you may have lots of observations, thousands of them, but and here you can specify how, what, which uh, maximum number of le uh, levels you want. So in this case, we'll leave six. Number of clusters, let's leave two. This basically doesn't matter. Uh, and then finish. So software did its job and it created two or uh, three tabs. HC, that's HC stands for hierarchical clustering, HC output, HC clusters, and HC dendrobe. And this is my original data worksheet when, which contains observations and the dendrogram which we created manually before. Let's start with the dendrogram. When we click this, as you can see, we don't see any dendrogram. If you don't see it and you probably will not see it first time, then make sure to go to, make sure that the data mining is selected, which is this, this is my data mining tool is selected. And then data mining is selected, tab, and then click on model. And when you click, you will see that dendrogram appears. This is the dendrogram created by the software. The bad thing is that this software is not saving dendrogram as a part of your Excel spreadsheet. That's why in order to save it, one of the easiest way is we can use a snippet tool to copy and paste. So I will use, I'll do that. Let me go to, I have a snippet tool in here, a snipping tool, click, new, and I will select the entire dendrogram, say copy, now let me, and we'll go here and copy somewhere here. Copy, you can go either press paste here or control V is the same thing. Paste. Oops, dendrogram. I, it looks like I didn't copy. Let me redo it. Snipping, new. This. Copy. Then come here and paste. Let me close this window. So this is dendrogram. Let me resize so you can put next to each other and see that. Okay, now let's compare these two dendrograms. This is the dendrogram which we created manually in, in one of my previous demos. And this is the dendrogram which was created by software for the same six observations. And as you can see, they are identical deadline, um, dendrograms. Okay, let's look at other tabs, see which other information do we have in addition to dendrogram. Let's click on H HC output and scroll down. Here you will see the area which says clustering stages. So this area, this shows how software did clustering one step at a time. This should be exactly the same which we did in, in, in manual clustering in one of my previous videos. In order to interpret this, let me just copy this dendrogram and bring and paste next to it. So I can interpret and you can visually see it. So what, what is this? The first step, stage of clustering, it says, Clusters one and six were merged and the distance was 0 0.10. Look here, cluster three and six were merged and the distance, which is the height of this vertical bar, was 0 0.10. So we got our first cluster after merging. And this cluster is usually, when, not usually, always, when you merge two clusters, the name of new cluster will be the name of the first cluster. So the name of this new cluster, which contains three and six together, is three. Next stage of clustering, cluster two is merged with that new tree. So this is my cluster two, and this, uh, this is my new tree. So these are merged together into one cluster, and this new cluster is named as cluster two. Stage three, this new cluster is merged with five, 
which is this, and pay attention that the cost of merging, which means the distance is 0 0.14, which is this number. So they are merged with five and we got new cluster, this cluster, which is named again as two. Then cluster two, the new two, which is this, is merged with cluster four, which is this one. As you can see, they are merged and we got a new cluster. And the merging cost is 0 0.158, which is approximately, you can see it here. But remember that the, when we merge, the height of the vertical bar is the minimum distance. And finally, this new cluster, which is named as two, is merged with the remaining one cluster, which is just one observation. And uh, the, dis the distance between these two clusters is 0 0.22, which you can see right here. So this is how you interpret a clustering stages generated by the software. These are exactly the same steps which we did manually in one of my previous um, demo. Let me switch back to PowerPoint. Well, so this is what I just explained how to interpret the clustering stage table. Now, question is how to interpret the dendrograms. As we learned, the dendrogram is, is just visual representation of the hierarchical uh, clustering. And it also shows the nested cluster, which means what, which cluster is nested in which other cluster. And in dendrogram, the horizontal uh, axis are the observations or clusters, and the vertical axis is the distance or similarity. So this is an example. Let me demonstrate on this example. The example is relatively bigger cluster than we discussed before, and then bigger dendrogram, which we discussed before. So this is how we can interpret the dendrogram. Let's draw a horizontal line, y equals to 2.3. This is the, this red line. Let's see how many vertical, vertical lines this red line intersects. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. So it intersects 14 vertical lines. Now imagine that we are cutting the dendrogram with this line. So this is what remains. What remains is when we cut, we will come up with several branches or small clusters. So one cluster is this, that's seven, 12, and 21 is one cluster. The second cluster is 15 alone, then 17 alone, then one and 18 in one cluster, 14 and 19 in one cluster, and so on. So this here we have 4, 20, 10, and 13 in one cluster. So the bottom line is when we, when we draw a vertical uh, horizontal line 1 equals to 2.3, it intersects 14 vertical lines and it uh, therefore and therefore it identifies 14 clusters below down this red line. So what's the meaning of this 2.3 then? The meaning is that if you select any cluster below this red line, then the Euclidean distance will be, or the similarity will be 2.3 or less. 2.3 or less. Which is, the similarity is no more than 2.3. That's how you interpret. No. One more question is actually on this slide, I also highlighted one of those clusters, like when we, if, if we put, um, take a move this line and make it, let's say 2.5, then it will intercept not these two lines in here, but only this one. Now, one more question. What if when we are selecting the, uh, using hierarchical clustering, the purpose is to divide into clusters in such a way that uh, observations within the same cluster are similar, similar and observations from different clusters are dissimilar. So the question is, 
what is the best number of clusters, uh, the best for, for specific data set, for a given data set. This is how the best number is calculated. So here I explain this in detail. So what I did here, I drew a red line, uh, which uh, over the, the lowest horizontal line in my dendrogram. This is another dendrogram, example of another dendrogram. So the lowest horizontal line is this. So I drew a red line over it. And then I drew a blue line over the next horizontal line in my dendrogram. So then the distance between I calculate the distance between this. Then what we do is then we move red line to the next level and blue line, which means red line will become where the blue is, then blue will be moved up to this level. And then we'll calculate again distance between red and blue. And we do this all the way up. And then, <clears throat> the, then the, we, the best number of clusters is we have to dendrogram where the difference is the most significant. So in this case, it will be here. Somewhere. Let me summarize what we learned. So first of all, we learned how we can do hierarchical clustering using a software package, which we, uh, were, we purchased and installed uh, for this course called Analytic Solver. And we learned how to do that uh, and how to interpret the, the result of the of, of the result of the work of that software. And also we learned how to interpret the dendrogram. This concludes my video. Bye bye. <laughs>